Hello, and welcome to Monumental Praise. Monumental Praise is a service of the multimedia ministry of New Monumental Baptist Church. We invite you to come and join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. here in our main sanctuary, or you can join us online at www.newmonumental.org. And you can also see us on the YouTube channel, New Monumental Chattanooga. Now, if you would, please join us for the Word of God. Man, our scripture this morning is coming from the book of John, the 13th chapter, John, the 13th chapter, verse 2, and then verses 18 through 22. John 13, verse 2, and then 18 through 22. And it reads, The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Verse 18, I'm not referring to all of you. I know those who I have chosen. But this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I'm telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly I tell you, Whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me accepts him who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. For a few minutes today, I'd like for us to Think on this subject. Guess who's coming to dinner. Guess who's coming to dinner. You may be seated. In the mall or in a crowded restaurant, on a bus or a train or in a crowded airplane or even in churches, wherever we are, when we gather in like places, we all have at least one common goal in nine. More often than not, in these crowded places, that is all we have in common, usually. Usually we don't give things like this a lot of thought. We really don't know or even think about who the other people are in the mall while we're shopping. And unless the person next to us on the plane does or acts strangely in some way, we usually don't give any thought to who that person is. When the church service is crowded and we may exchange pleasantries with the person sitting next to us, but we're all in church, so everybody's good, right? But now, that's public. Let's move this to a private setting. Say dinner at someone's house and you don't know all of the guests that are coming. But the common goal is a nice meal with some nice people and to just have a good time. Now if something in that evening changes and the evening goes left, we are surprised that the outcome and the the entire evening now changes. Now our common goal is no longer the same. It doesn't exist. Our, our demeanor changes. Then we begin to wonder exactly who these people are that we're having dinner with. In 1967, Sidney Poitier, Spencer Tracy, and Catherine Hepburn starred in a movie entitled Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? The premise of the movie during one of the many racially charged times in our history was a black man and a white woman falling in love with each other and the woman inviting the man to her parents house for dinner without telling them that her boyfriend was black the title of the movie suggests that the dinner guest would be surprised would be a surprise to the host now 38 years later in 2005 Bernie Mac Aston Kutcher and Zoe Saldini did a remake of the movie with the roles reversed and the black woman brought the white man to her parents house for dinner 
Now, in all of these scenarios that have been introduced so far, the subjected people were not aware of the people they were about to be involved with, thereby leaving them guessing. But as we review our text today, we will notice that the host, Jesus, was not in doubt about who his guests were. And the guests were all acquainted with each other. So many of you may be wondering now, how did I come up with this title, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Well, about a month ago, as we were going through Reverend Stewart's ordination council, a question was asked of him as to what his thoughts were on the Lord's Supper. In his response to the question, he said that the Lord's Supper reminded him of the various types of people Jesus welcomed to be at the table with him. To me, his answer was so profound that it just started me thinking, I, and I, I couldn't let go of it. It just wouldn't get out of my head. So I began to look at the people who were at the Lord's Supper. That's when I realized many of us have become so familiar with Leonardo da Vinci's depiction of this iconic moment in Christendom, we really don't see who the guests are that are gathered around the table with our Lord. But not only do we not see it, the Bible tells us that even the ones that were at the table really did not know who they were dining with. Like the crowd at Plain or the Field Church, everybody at the table was there because of a common goal. They were all believers in and followers of Jesus Christ, right? So again, I pose the thought to you, guess who's coming to dinner? Verse 2, Jesus knows that even as the evening meal was in progress, the devil had already prompted Judas to betray him. Then in verse 18, Jesus says, I know those that I have chosen. I know who you are. I'm not surprised by who is here, nor by what they're about to do. Jesus told his disciples that one of them was going to betray him. He said, I'm telling you this now so that when it happens, you can be assured that I am who I say I am. Jesus still not finished with what he had to say to his disciples. He said, whoever accepts anyone I send, meaning them, meaning us, also accepts me. And whoever accepts me, accepts the one who sent me. Jesus was letting them know, I know who you are. I know your faults and I know your flaws. I know everything you have done and everything that you will do, but because I'm about to send you out, I, know, I need you to know that whoever accepts you as my messenger will accept me and my Father will accept them. That's a heavy responsibility to put on them, but he wanted them to know. I see you. I know who you are. And I trust you to do the things that I've called you to do. So now, this plays to the perception others have of what a Christian should be. As it reflects, it also reflects on the legalism many Christians try hard to live up to. Jesus is telling the people at the table, dining with him, I know who you are and what you're capable of doing. And I'm still sending you out to share this gospel to the world. Perfection is not a requirement. Accepting the word and accepting Jesus as your personal savior, that, that is the requirement. Now Jesus tells them again, one of you is going to betray me. Now verse 22 says it this way, he says, they all began looking around the room at each other, trying to figure out who would betray Jesus trying to imagine exactly who had come to dinner. So let's take a look at who it was that had come to dinner. Remember now, everybody that was there was invited, even hand-picked by Jesus to be there. There was Simon, also called Peter, Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, who was also called Jude, Simon, and Judas. In this hand-picked group, 
there were fishermen and common laborers. There was a tax collector. People in that profession were known for being scammers. There was a zealot or a political activist. There was a doubter in the midst. There was one with a foul mouth and a quick temper. There was somebody at the table eating with Jesus who was going to deny him, that deny knowing even who he was, not once but three times. There was an outright thief sitting at the table. The thief was the one who was going to betray Jesus. The thought of these people sitting around the table with us would give us pause. But imagine this sacred hour, this historical setting, this night that Jesus would be betrayed and turned over to the Romans to be crucified. These were the last people Jesus would dine with in his physical body. Jesus loved all of these men, knowing who they were and what they were about to do. Knowing the future of the Christian church was in their hands. Knowing their imperfections. Here they sit at the table with the master as he's preparing to return to his father in heaven. This ragtag band of misfits who has past sins. They've got future sins. Uh, they've got integrity issues. They've got disbelief issues. They've got distrust issues. They were unorganized. They were fearful and flawed. They, they were a completely chaotic group of religious pioneers. These were the future church pillars of the faith. These were the people my Savior surrounded himself with as he was preparing to leave this earth and return back to his Father in heaven. Church, can you see it now? Look closely. Guess who's coming to dinner? As these disciples sat around the table staring at each other, the Bible said they stared at each other at a loss, wondering who Jesus meant. This band of men had been together for at least three years, some even longer because of their relationships or, or, or because they were related. They knew each other. They knew one another's traits and propensities, but they did not know, they did not know was at this point in their lives, at this point in their relationship with Jesus, at this point in their notoriety for being followers of Jesus, what they did not know was which one of them was capable of betraying Jesus. But well, watch this, watch this. At this moment, at this particular time in history, Jesus reveals to us who came to dinner. If we were to walk up those stairs and reach the door of the open, upper room and we push that door open to look in to see who it was that was sitting at the table, we would be shocked to find out that seated at the master's table was all of us. When we read the collective stories of the great men of faith, we see them as the ultimate believers who, had, uh, de who were devout and deeply in tune to the word, the will, and the way of the Lord. You know, the way that people think about Christians who go to church more than twice a week. Huh. We all look holy and cleaned up and shining on the outside. And when we greet our neighbors and we say, all right, I'm on my way to church. They go, oh. All right, will you be blessed? You've created an image in their minds of who you must be. But now remember about these men. These were the same men that Jesus said to them, oh, ye of little faith. These are the same men that Jesus questioned them. He said, how long shall I put up with you? How long shall I stay with you? They were at the table. Now please don't get me wrong. These are truly mighty men of God who are the actual fathers of our faith. But these are also men. Frail and flawed just like all of us. They were hand-picked disciples of Jesus just like we are disciples of Jesus. 
The one thing Jesus has always wanted us to know is that we are all welcome to dine with him. David said we are the sheep of his pasture. Paul wrote that we are the workmanship of God in Jesus Christ. We are exactly who God says we are, nothing more and nothing less, and the representation of us has always been at the table with Jesus. Guess who's coming to dinner? We are who's coming to dinner. With a little bit of doubt about the resurrected Savior, just like Thomas. Guess who's coming to dinner? We are who's coming to dinner. With a cussing, fighting, quick-tempered, denying spirit, just like Peter. Huh? Who's coming to dinner? Guess who's coming to dinner? We are coming to dinner. Common folks, blue-collar workers, everyday people who are just doing the right thing and want to live a good life for the Lord, just like James, John, and Andrew. We are who's coming to dinner. Guess who's coming to dinner? People with a lying and a thieving spirit, just like Judas. We are who's coming to dinner. Guess who's coming to dinner? Wealthy people with questionable doubt about how they got their money, just like Matthew. We are who's coming to dinner. Guess who's coming to dinner? People who are close to the heart of Jesus, just like John. We are who's coming to dinner. The table has been set and the evening meal is going on. This is, what, this is what the Bible says. And Jesus is waiting, though, for each of us to show up and take our seat at the dinner table. We are no different from the millions who've already sat at this table before us. None of us are so bad that we won't be accepted at the table. We are all invited, hand-picked guests of the Lord's Supper. There is room for everybody that believes in God at the table. We are who come into dinner. As we gather in the presence of the Lord, whether individually or collectively, God already knows who we are, and he's extended a personal invitation to each of us. Da Vinci's artistry is nice to look at, just like our family pictures when we put them on display. The picture shows an image of what we want people to see. But the life, the life and times of the people that are in the picture, are often not displayed by what the picture looks like. Did you hear me? We have no earthly idea what the Last Supper looked like. But Leonardo da Vinci painted a picture of these saintly people leading on Jesus and propping up and looking prosperous and looking like they just, they lived and breathed who Jesus was. But the truth of the matter is, everybody that was at the Last Supper was just like us. We all have our flaws, so did they. They were following Jesus, so are we. They stumbled and failed, so do we. But the picture doesn't show us that. But see, here's what happened. No disrespect to Da Vinci. You know, his art was great, but the Word of God speaks volumes to everybody that will listen. It says so much more than a picture. See, Jesus took the flawed and made them flawless. And that's what God wants us to know. Peter is at the table. He is the disciple of Jesus that Jesus declared upon this rock, I will build my church. But that night, Peter was going to deny Jesus not one time, not two times, but three times before the crock crowed. Judas. Judas was trusted by Jesus to be the treasurer of all of his money. But that night, Judas would betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. But he was at the table. Thomas was at the table, a beloved and devout follower of Jesus. But five days from that night, Thomas was going to doubt the resurrection of the Savior, although he knew Jesus had told him it was going to happen. Hours after this meal, this very meal, these men would go with Jesus into the garden to keep watch for the Roman soldiers as Jesus prayed. But while he prayed for his life and for our soul, every one of these men fell asleep. Not one time, but three times. They were not watching out for Jesus. After Jesus had been taken by the Romans, most of these men went into hiding. But these were the people who were at the table. But get this, church. These were the hand-picked dinner guests that Jesus personally selected to be with him. They were the disciples. They were the new leaders of what would be the universal church. These are the reflections of who we are. Oh, come on now. Somebody ought to see themselves just sitting at the table. 
Jesus thought we were to die for. And he brought all of us into the upper room experience for the Last Supper. Guess who's coming to dinner? We are who's coming to dinner. The desire and the will of God for us has never been confused like the image of Da Vinci. When in reality, it was the flawness of man that God was really after. He provided us with character analysis of all of the people that surrounded him. He wanted us to know he died for us just as we were. Paul says in Romans, while we were yet in sin, he died for us. Jesus told his disciples, as often as you celebrate this meal, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Don't forget me. Don't forget what I taught you. Don't forget who I am. Don't forget where I came to serve you. Don't forget who I invited. You are at the feast of the Lord that will last through all eternity. Church, take note of the 12 that were at the dinner table. Then look around this church. Then take a look at yourself and reflect on the person and personalities that were gathered around Jesus at the Last Supper. Guess who's coming to dinner? We are who's coming to dinner. We are who's coming to dinner. And Jesus is waiting for each of us. The invitation has already been sent out. He wrote it years ago. It's bound in leather. And it says, Holy Bible, you've got your invitation. Guess who's coming to dinner? Each of us are who's coming to dinner. We are who's coming to dinner. And God is not surprised by what you bring. Amen? Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise in his house. Truly, we serve an awesome God. Father, we come to you right now, God, just thanking you for this word. Father, we thank you for the invitation to dinner, to dine at your feet, to be blessed by your presence. God, we thank you that we know that you know exactly who we are and you invited us nonetheless. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this word, God. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify your name. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we pray. Amen. As we prepare now for our uh, communion, we'll have our communion scripture and our communion prayer. You will be here in 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. God bless you. Let us pray. Eternal Father God, we come to say thank you this morning. Lord, as we begin to partake in this sacred ceremony, Father God, we pray that we examine ourselves, Father God. Lord, we thank you for all you have done, Father God. But thank you for the blood, Father God. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Father God. And Lord, let us, let us examine our heart and ourselves, Father God, before we go in, into this breaking of bread, Father God. But Lord, you know, and we thank you again. In your son, Jesus' name, we say it all. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that on that night, Jesus had gathered his disciples together to let them know that this would be their last time eating together. He was preparing for his death. He was preparing to go back into eternal life. He broke the bread. As he sat at the table, he broke the bread and he blessed it. And they all ate together. May we all eat together. And then he took the wine and he poured it. And he said, this... It's a symbol of my blood shed for you. 
He blessed it, and they all drank together. May we all drink together. The Bible records that on that night, Jesus and his disciples were going out to the garden to pray. And they left going out singing hymns, lifting up yet the name of God. As we prepare to leave today, I want us to uh, go out singing hymns of praise and tell the world about the God that we love. Tell the world about the goodness of God. Tell the world about the one who saved us from ourselves. Let us stand as we prepare. Again, thank you for joining us. I'm sure that you've been blessed by the word of God. Now, if you would like to give your life to Christ, if you have decided that this would be the place for you, then we invite you to join us. You can become a member of New Monumental by going to our website, www.newmonumental.org. Go to the contact page where you will find a new member's form. Complete that form and email it back to the church. Someone for our new members committee will contact you. We thank you for allowing us to be a blessing to you. We would like to offer you the opportunity to continue in worship by the giving of your tithes and offerings. We have multiple ways to give, including the church's app, your personal bill pay, the giving tab on the website, or you may simply mail it in. The address is New Monumental Baptist Church, 901 Woodmore Lane, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37411. Thank you again for joining us, and we pray that you have a monumental day in the Lord. Thank you.